community-qld.com.au. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, healthy lifestyle habits for 2011. This is the time where we're thinking about setting our intentions for the next year, our resolutions, and as parents, our children are often involved in that. So what, I, what I'm looking at is specific daily habits that we can not only lead by example, but we can understand about what's going to help our children develop healthy brains and also successes in their life later on. So the first one that we're going to look at is a bedtime routine. So getting to bed on time is really important for brain development. The brain systems do not function well without sleep. And when we sleep, the body goes through six processes. And these are really important processes. Every night while we're asleep, our body takes care of itself. It um, has toxic waste management systems, so it gets rid of those toxins in the body. And there's healing that goes on, there's repairing in our body, building the immune system back up, you know, getting everything nice and healthy. There's the growth part, so we do our growing during the night time. Anti-stress and emotional consolidation, so all those things that might be stressing us um, and all those emotions, our body takes care of all that for us. Memory consolidation, so all the things we've learnt during the day, all the, the things that we've experienced, it consolidates all of those and, and puts it into the right compartments in the brain. And also learning, so those learning processes that we go through, it gets ready to learn more, make room for learning more the next day. If we haven't got enough sleep, and that includes us as adults as well as our children, some of those processes may not happen. And that puts a lot more stress on the body. And then we've got good nutrition is another great habit to get into. The brain requires all those great nutrients um, going into our body every day for the development, not only of our body, but our brains and, and all the things that our brain does for our body. Fee talks a lot about good nutrition with children. There's a lot of great advice there. And there's a lot of great advice out there everywhere that you can get hands on to help you be getting the right nutrients every day for you and your family. Regular exercise is also another important one. Endorphins are the brain's built-in stabilizers. And exercise and physical work stabilizes the brain systems. Especially the emotional response and mood regulate, regulation responses. So, especially with teenagers, they seem to do less exercise, but at the time when emotions are high, um, all different emotions, positive and negative emotions, that mood regulate, regulation is really important. So, exercise for our children. And you can also help that, that exercise time, with having more outdoor time. Uh, as human beings, we weren't meant to be indoors all the time. But in this day and age, uh, we're busy, it's very hot, especially at this time of year, um, so we like to stay in air conditioning. So we might not get outdoors every day as much as we could. That connection with the earth running around in your backyard with no shoes on on the grass, um, those things are very beneficial for people and especially children, the ability to run. Uh, you know, if there's no running in the house, but when you're outside, you can run and work off all that energy, get the exercise, but also um, breathe in some fresh air and, and be running around. Regular jobs and responsibilities, very important for children. So teach your children how to work. Work keeps a child connected to reality, to the reality of life. Teaching children by example how to work helps the brain develop normally. So having a good work ethic yourself is really good and encouraging that in your children. So whether it be jobs around the house um, or when they're old enough, suggesting that they get a part-time job is important because it gives them the opportunity to learn to work and that is crucial. Children who never work um, seem not to, studies have shown, mature at the age appropriate rates and also uh, be that more mature adult. So that work ethic is really important to, to tie in for your children. And with that, make sure that privileges, and uh, that privileges come with responsibilities. So we know that with success, it quite often takes a bit of effort and sometimes a lot of effort. So we can teach that to our children and keep them again connected with the reality of life and what life requires for success. So with the responsibilities and the jobs that they do and their part, playing their part in the family, tie that in with their privileges. 
so that they start to learn that with every effort there comes a reward. Limit exposure to any violence if you can. There's many, many forms of violence around that, that children see. Um, violence in the environment, TV, media, video games, movies. Um, and repeated and continual exposure actually does reprogram the child's primitive brain. So they might accept things into their reality that might not be beneficial for them. So have a look at that and, and look at what exposure they're getting and just see if you can limit that so that they don't act out on something that they think is part of their reality or they think is normal. And then we're also going to look at simplifying. Simplify your life and your family's life. We tend to be very overcluttered, overwhelmed, lots of things happening in our lives. So when it's family time or when you're in your home, how can you simplify that with regular routines, not as much clutter, not as much overwhelm, not as much happening, so that you can truly get that relaxation time and connection time with each and every member of your family. How can you simplify that? How can you cut out a little bit of technology, a little bit of overload of information, and, and just make things nice and simple again so that you can have a lot more fun. You have more fun when you're relaxed, and you learn more when you're having fun. Especially children, they learn more through play than what they do through work. And get in tune, and the last one for 2011 is have a look at what's important to each and every member of your family. What's important to them about being a part of a family? What's important to you about being a parent? What are the values, the general values of your family? In businesses, there are mission statements, vision statements, values, strategies. Do you have those in your family? And you can all be heading towards the goal. You can reward correctly. You can be working towards something that is in the future for everybody. Everybody's on the same page as much as possible. Values have changed with different age groups. For example, my teenagers, their values are very much friends, um, clothes, music. Uh, but they do, they do want to have fun in their family. That's something they both the ground, and they want to feel safe. My youngest one, he's possible what's most valued to him about a family is getting fed and lots of cuddles and kisses and feeling safe as well. My values is to be able to allow my family to feel safe, to be able to provide what my family needs and to be able to get them a good education, a stable upbringing and a sense of self-worth. So work on what's important to each member of your family, then link it all up and work towards that. Okay, that's all for today and thank you very much. We look forward to your feedback as always and I will talk to you again next week. Good luck with planning your intentions for 2011 and I hope all your wishes come true. Thank you.